By doing these exercises and being tested on a lie detector-like machine called the Emia, they make sure you learn to follow exactly the teachings of Scientology's founder, L. Ron Hubbard. You can have a better life, they say, by following L. Ron Hubbard. Or maybe not. L. Ron Hubbard's son, Scientology's researcher, and other church officials have left the church, and now for the first time they are publicly saying that Hubbard is a liar, and the church's main interest is money. From the beginning, this was a fraud. Right, correct. This man is L. Ron Hubbard, Jr., son of the founder of Scientology. He left the church in 1959. He's kept in contact with church members, but out of fear for himself and his family, he has kept silent. Now he feels he has to warn people. Your father never meant to help people to start a religion. He didn't believe it. He was just out to make money. Well, he meant, he meant to start a religion for uh, self aggrandizement for money, for power. Money and power. Mm -hmm. And he got that in great doses, both of them. Albert Jr. was there from the beginning when his father founded Scientology. He was second in command for 10 years. From the beginning, you were cheating people. You were telling them, this is a religion, we're going to help you. But the real purpose was to make money. Correct. How much money? Well, I knew after 1959 when I left the organization, he was worth only a 20 or $30 million personally. But uh, I have seen figures recently as much as a quarter billion. The church denies that Hubbard Sr. profited personally, but does admit the church is well off. Some of the money was raised through people like Andrea Schwartz. She enrolled students in Scientology courses. I would outline a program that pretty closely matched his savings account or matched what he could buy, you know, by getting a loan or whatever. And people would borrow money to take your courses. I mean, people would sell their houses. They'd lie to their parents. They'd do just about anything they could. I would have died for a long time. If I had gotten an order, this is what we need to do to make planet Earth a better place, I would have done it. But what do you find when you look carefully at Mr. Hubbard? Jerry Armstrong was so close to Hubbard, the church appointed him researcher for Hubbard's biography. He assembled thousands of documents on Hubbard, but when he read them... L. Ron Hubbard became a lie. In Scientology's text, Hubbard claims he miraculously cured himself of combat wounds. He was never wounded. He was never crippled. He was never blinded. He did spend some time under medical care for ulcers. 99% of that uh, my father has written and said about himself is totally untrue. He just uh, made it up. Okay. Profits from the bestseller went not to religion, says his son, but to the importing of drugs. He furnished the money. I went around, I went along to guard the money. Um, and uh, through uh, mafia friends of his, he imported uh, uh, cocaine and heroin through Columbia. Mm -hmm. People were giving you money to get happiness, religion, from learning, and you were going to Mexico and Colombia with your father to buy drugs, marijuana, and cocaine. Then in England, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and the United States, government agencies started investigating Hubbard and the church. Hubbard, however, never had to answer any questions because he moved Scientology's headquarters to this ship. And for five years, he ran the church from the ship. You were on the boat with him for four years. Mm -hmm. You got married on the boat. Right. He gave away my life. He was the surrogate father of the bride. He was actually. Several church officials who were on the boat now say Hubbard used the boat to store millions of dollars. You would see it, help process it? Uh, I helped clear it through customs. Millions of dollars. Millions. In briefcases. Armstrong says in 1973, Hubbard went ashore to hide, and these pictures were taken of him in Queens, New York. The reason he fled the ship was because of a French fraud case. He grew his hair long as part of a disguise, and whenever he went out in public, he wore a little hat and uh, glasses. At the same time, he and his church launched an attack on his enemy. My father's basic policy has always been since at least since 1952, is called Fair Games, which means that uh, anybody that speaks out against Scientology, writes about Scientology, he would do everything in their power to destroy them. Like what? Uh, find out um, 
every mean, down, dirty thing that they ever did in their life and, and use it against them. It's an intelligence operation. An intelligence operation? Gathering information on who? On anyone who would oppose Alan Hubbard and his dream.